Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be chatting about all of the series that I have incomplete. So these could be series that I started a very long time ago and never got around to finishing, but there's also a couple series that I'm up to date on and I'm just waiting for the next book to be released. A goal of mine this last year was to reduce the number of series I'm in the middle of because I'm very overwhelmed with the amount of like plots and characters and things I'm trying to keep straight in my brain and I'm noticing I need to reread a lot before continuing and I want to avoid that in the future. So my goal for the next few months is to finish some of these series. So I want to give kind of a check-in on where I'm at now and then at the end of the year see how many I was successful in actually finishing. I'll do like a series I finished in 2021 type of video. But first, if you're new here, hi, my name is Emily. This is actually my second channel where I post everything I'm interested in outside of the beauty space. So my main channel is a beauty related channel. I'm actually, I just finished filming a beauty video and decided to keep the camera rolling in this area and just film this video so I hope you don't mind. But on this channel you will find bookish content, content related to my very first vegetable garden that I have been excited to experiment with this year, as well as the occasional mom related content as I am a mom of three boys. So sometimes there will be a vlog thrown in or a clean with me, something like that. Just I like making content that I like watching and I don't only watch beauty content so and I love to read so I love to do bookish content as well and ramble apparently. Okay I have my spreadsheet of my book series I'm in the middle in organized by when I started the series originally like when I read that very first book so I'm just going to hop right in with the series I started when I discovered booktube in 2018. I started a ton of series when I discovered booktube. I was learning about all these series I had never heard of before and just went to my library and started a ton of them. So let's start with The Lunar Chronicles. I have read Cinder and Scarlet, but I still have to read Crest, Crest, Fairest, Winter, and then Stars Above, which is a collection of short stories, I guess. I, this is a YA sci-fi novel. The first one, Cinder, follows um, a Cinderella retelling, uh, but she is a cyborg. And I really actually enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite. I actually gave Scarlet the second in the series five stars. I was really engaged the whole time. Scarlet was more of a retelling with Red Riding Hood, but the stories kind of converged towards the end. So they are tied into each other, obviously, but you're following a different character. I've been on the waitlist for Crest from my library for a long time. My library where I just moved only has one copy of the book and I think someone's been keeping it for a long time because I've been number one in line for months, which is kind of disappointing, but I would really like to finish these series. Like I have them in order of when I started them, so hopefully I can knock off the ones I've been in the middle of the longest first. Next I have The Mortal Instruments, which I've actually read the first five books in The Mortal Instruments a long time ago, um, probably at the end of high school or beginning of university, which that was a little while ago now. And I decided to reread the series because I hadn't enjoyed it that much and everyone on booktube was raving about it so I thought I was missing something. I don't think I was. I think it's just not really for me. So I have reread the first trilogy part. So City of Bones, City of Ashes, and City of Glass. And now I think I need to move on to Clockwork Angel. Is that right? And read that series, that those three books? I have no idea. And then I will return to the next three, uh, City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, which is where I stopped last time, and City of Heavenly Fire. So I haven't moved on to the next series. I can't even think 
the infernal devices right I haven't moved on to that yet but I should soon just so I can officially finish the mortal instruments without any spoilers or anything um, it's a YA fantasy series if you're in, unfamiliar with you know demons and angels and all of that stuff and it's just reads very young and I don't like the twist thrown in at the end of the first book that kind of isn't resolved until many books later yeah next I have the diviners by Libba Bray I reread the diviners earlier this year in preparation to finish off this series before like during spooky season so around right now this is a YA paranormal set in the 1920s I believe like flapper era very spooky I reread the diviners via audiobook and read it the first time physically and I really like the spooky vibes of the audiobook so maybe I will go that route for layer of dreams which is the second one and I do hope to pick that one up very soon a Court of Thorns and Roses. I've only ever read the first one and I loved it. I think I gave it four or five stars and everyone says A Court of Mist and Fury is their favorite in the series, but I just never got around to it. I would like to have these on my shelves, I think, so I just need to purchase those books. So we have the original trilogy and then there is a novella and then A Court of Silver Flames just released earlier this year and I would really like to continue on with that series of the Beauty and the Beast retelling, YA fantasy, kind of like a romance fantasy I guess and I really did enjoy the first one a lot. And finally, the final series I started in 2018 and have yet to finish, I have finished some of the ones I started in 2018 but not these ones, is Nevernight. I only ever read the first one and again, I loved it and I even have God's Grave on my shelves that my husband got for me as an anniversary present a couple years ago. And he has like a little note in the cover, it's so sweet and I still haven't read it. I don't own Nevernight and I would like to buy that, reread it, and immediately continue on with God's Grave and then finish it off with Dark Dawn eventually. Another... actually no. Nevernight is not YA. I was gonna say another YA series. I would say it's new adult or adult assassin school, kind of brutal. I really enjoyed it. Sorry I'm not like describing each and every one of these series, but we would be here for a long time if I did that. In 2019, I was better about continuing series that I started because I only have three here on my list that I have yet to finish. The first is Truly Devious, which is a YA mystery trilogy, and I'm actually currently rereading Truly Devious, the first one, via audiobook for Becca's Bookopolathon and the Magical Readathon, and I'm really enjoying it. It is very young, and I because of the reread, I'm I don't know, I'm just waiting for the action to happen, I guess. And I would like to then obviously continue on. Again, mystery, I'm just in the mood for that when as we're coming into the fall time, and with rereading the first in the series I want to make sure I'm then continuing so I don't have to reread the first one yet again before continuing on. So then we have the vanishing stare and the hand on the wall and I don't know, I'm assuming that all three of them follow the same characters set at the same school following like trying to solve the first mystery that happened many years ago on the school campus because I've re I remember at the end of Truly Devious it wasn't really resolved so I guess I'll have to find out. Next I have Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Again really loved Red Rising and never continued on. What is the matter with me? I just <laughs> I'm so awful. You'll notice a lot of these I've only read the first book. So this is an adult sci-fi series, a mix between The Hunger Games and Game of Thrones. Really loved it. You're in space on Mars, I believe, and the people are classed within colors. And you're following Darrow, who's a red, who is like, that's the lowest of the low. And not just in a discrimination, segregation kind of way, but each tier of humanity 
the people are like literally different. Like they are smarter, they are stronger, they are used for certain occupations and things and the reds are miners they're stuck underground and they've been lied to for a very long time and that's kind of where the story kicks off and I'm I'm excited to continue <laughs> and finally for series started in 2019 I have Saga which is a an adult sci-fi graphic novel series and I actually read volume 5 last month and have volume 6 on my shelves right now from the library to finish. I believe there's only 9 volumes in the series or maybe that's all that's out. Let me check. Okay actually there's going to be 14 volumes in the series but from the looks of things only 9 have been released so far. So we are waiting on volume 10. So I'm on volume 6 of 9 that are out, 14 eventually. I feel pretty good about that and I think I could get up to date on that series by the end of the year if I tried really hard. Series started in 2020. Again, not as many as previous years. I'll make up for it in the series I started this year. Do You just wait. Um, I did read Heartstopper Volume 1 in 2020 and didn't continue on with the series. It's just a very cute um, graphic novel series following two boys in high school who are falling in love. It's very sweet. Um, I just, I enjoyed it for what it was, of course, and I thought it was very cute. But it's just not my favorite. I think I'm too, like, old and cynical for these, like, high school love stories. I don't know. I will continue on, but it's just not a favorite like uh, it is for others. The Farseer trilogy. I read Assassin's Apprentice with the Elderling along last year when they started, the beginning of 2020, and never continued on with Royal Assassin. I did put Royal Assassin on my Magical Readathon TBR, so hopefully I can get to it this month. We're following Fitz and the Fool. It's the beginning of a very... Well, it's the beginning of a trilogy for Robin Hobb, but the very beginning of like a large expansive world. And there was a lot going on. Like these are heavy fantasy books. And I think I need to just be in the right mood. Fitz definitely has like some depression and things like that. And reading it can bring you down. And Robin Hobb is not afraid to torture her characters. So I, I'm not always in the right headspace to read Robin Hobb, but I am excited to continue on. Obviously, I'm like a year and a half behind Elder Ling Along, so I'm just going to have to be motivated to continue on my own. Next, I have Children of the Whales. This is a manga series or graphic novel series. I can't remember, but we're following this character who is on a mud whale, which are kind of like floating islands, and they think they are the only people left on the world, and whenever they see another mud whale floating by, they go travel to it to kind of raid it to see whatever supplies they can find on the other mud whale, and they find a another person on one in the first book. It wasn't my favorite, which is why I didn't really continue, though graphic novels or manga are very easy to kind of squeeze into the TBR. I have to get them from my library, and I don't even know if my library since I moved has this series, so we'll see. And lastly, at the end of 2020, I read The Inheritance Games, and there is a sequel, I believe it's out now, and that is The Hawthorne Legacy, and I really enjoyed this. It was kind of a YA thriller kind of book. Um, a girl seemingly unconnected to this very rich family receives the inheritance as long as she can survive living in the mansion with the rest of the family members for a year and there's lots of puzzles and games afoot and I mean if I came from a very wealthy family and my father or grandfather depending on which character you're talking about left 
his millions and millions of dollars to seemingly a complete stranger, I'd be pretty upset too. So there was a lot of shenanigans in that book. It was pretty fast paced and I really enjoyed it. And again, we'll continue with the series. Now we're on to the series I started this year, which is way too many considering I've only finished two or three series um, this year. But anyways, I have been re... I reignited my passion for reading in 2021. I, I was very slumpy through the pandemic and having another child, etc. So I was just interested in starting a whole bunch of new series, which wasn't strategic, that's for sure. I started His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. I have the bind up of the whole trilogy. It is a children's slash middle grade book like it starts off very young it's kind of like a polar fantasy i really enjoyed the first one i've had the bind up since i was a child and literally never read it before so i hope to get to the subtle knife soon then i read legend born by legend born by tracy dion a ya fantasy there are two kinds of magic we follow brie who is a high schooler but accepted into a program at a university and she joins in to a club and discovers magic and all of this stuff she wants to find out what happens to her mother and it is a king arthur retelling i didn't love the ending but the next in the series is not even out yet so i can't even continue on with that one if i wanted to i read six of crows earlier this year. I just received Crooked Kingdom in the mail so I did watch, I read Six of Crows in preparation for the Shadow and Bone Netflix series and I loved that by the way and we'll get to Crooked Kingdom soon. Duologies, I should just read both of them and get the series off of my list of things I need to read. The children sound like they're torturing each other upstairs. Blood and Ash. I read From Blood and Ash in June or July and I am currently reading A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire and the fourth book in this series is not due to come out until the following March so I'm going to wait a few months again before reading The Crown of Gilded Bones but I'm happy to say that there's only a couple months in between picking up the sequel for this one. I started reading Samantha March's The Six series. This is going to be a six part series that is adult um, women's fiction chick lit. We are following a group of six girlfriends and each book the main character is one of the six of them and so we get their point of view but it, they all tie together. I did really enjoy the first one though Christy was not my favorite character to be following. I need to wrap this up quickly. So then we have the Tide Child Trilogy. I read The Bone Chips last month by R.J. Barker. I really enjoyed it. It's an adult high fantasy, very nautical. You are on the sea for most of it. And I loved the world building in there, the lore, and how like women are some of the most powerful and like the more healthy children you birth, the higher ranked in society you are. That is so interesting. Very strange. And lastly, I have Mistborn. I started Mistborn last month, obsessed with the final empire. I gave it five stars, of course. I am waiting for the Well of Ascension to arrive. I did not fit it into my September TBR, which is probably silly of me to do because I am very excited to continue with that series. And I should have started it a million years ago because I love Brandon Sanderson. I say that and I've only read two of his full length books and a couple of his short stories. I did read Elantris and gave that five stars as well. So he is quickly becoming a favorite author of mine and I'm going to read the Mistborn. I don't know if I want to read the second era of Mistborn after the first era or then jump into Way of Kings. Let me know what you would suggest. And then lastly, I'm of course waiting on the next book in A Song of Ice and Fire by George R.R. R. Martin. I read the other ones that are out. 
but who knows if we're ever going to get that. So I've just kind of deleted that from my list because it's just depressing. I started that a very long time ago and of course cannot finish that series. So those are all of the series I'm in the middle of. Some I am closer to finishing than others, of course, and really hope to reduce this number significantly by the end of the year. What I'd really love is to continue the series that I have started this year so that they don't last on this list for a hundred years and also finish the ones that I have reread a book for this year. So The Diviners, Truly Devious, and knock a couple of the other ones off that I started in 2018, like the ones from longest ago. So for me, that's the Lunar Chronicles, the Mortal Instruments, A Court of Thorns and Roses, and Nevernight. There's no way I'm gonna finish that many, but we'll see what I can manage by the end of the year. That is going to be my focus. So in the following TBRs, you're going to be seeing a lot of sequels from me, and let's hope that I can get some of these off of my list. Let me know in the comments down below what series, what was the most recent series that you started and which series do you want to complete next? I would love to chat with you in the comments down below. If you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up so that I know and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.